right? Yep. Uh, so, first of all, welcome. Uh, uh, my name is Harsha Tanna. I am Chief Architect on the Cloud Manager product from Ericsson. Um, um, my name is Sudhir Ketamaka. Uh, I lead and manage a product development team uh, that's working on the Cloud Manager solution. But I also have a unique opportunity to play a solution architect role, helping Harsha and uh, some of our solution architects working with the customers. So first of all, thank you for coming. Uh, I know you have a wide choice of talks at this prime time, pretty close to the lunch time as well, and uh, great turnout. We are glad to see you all here. Clearly, the organizers have underestimated the telco interest in this summit. They gave a small room for all the telco talks. So next time, probably, they will do a better job. Um, OK, so today's talk is about uh, NFV orchestration going beyond virtualization. So this, just like everything else in software and life in general, there are multiple ways to do these things. And uh, this is our view. Uh, nothing here is uh, based on speculation. It's from our experience with uh, some of the real deployments in the past year or two years, and also some of the POCs that we are doing with uh, tier one customers around the world. So. Uh, Harshad and I uh, gave a talk in Vancouver, uh, also about NFE orchestration. Um, we uh, emphasized uh, how important it is to look at heterogeneous and uh, distributed clouds, uh, especially when you are in this, uh, you know, telco NFE uh, paradigm. Uh, the reason is you cannot assume a greenfield deployment. So I, you, you all by now very well know um, what NFE is and uh, why we are doing this. Yeah, and so just, just to add to that, in fact, uh, there were a number of talks. Uh, we are happy to see that. There were a number of talks this summit uh, talking about the same topics. And so we, we, we kind of started a bit early, about two, two and a half, three years back. But we, we see that our assumptions are getting validated, and glad to see that really happening in the industry. Right. Uh, so some of these things that we're going to talk here are certainly debatable, so you can, we'll leave some time for questions at the end, but uh, please hold off until the end. And there's not too many slides, so you can even remember the slide number and, you know, just or point to the slide back, and we can go back and talk about it. All right, let's get started. Um, this is our agenda. I'm not going to go too much into the detail on what NFE is, what, what Mono Framework is. I think by now, you know, I'm, I'm expecting a lot of you have been attending the talks about NFE or know something about, you know, telco NFE. So we'll go through the, you know, orchestrator, what we meant by going beyond virtualization, um, and then what Ericsson is doing about it, and, uh, you know, a brief talk about our Ericsson cloud portfolio as well. Um, right? This, this is the NFV um, um, overview from, you know, as defined by the um, ISG in Etsy. Um, not a standard yet proposal. And uh, uh, a lot of things, I mean, I think it, it will evolve quite a bit. And a lot, uh, several of these things are, you know, um, yeah, getting there. Um, key elements, and, and we are going to focus today mostly on the, you know, the orchestration and the management part, which is the Mano and the Virtual Infrastructure Manager or Managers, uh, which is the OpenStack, uh, is also part of it. Uh, OpenStack kind of falls between the NFVI and the WIM um, layer, as you uh, most of you uh, very well know. So the framework here, Mano meant. NFVO, the VNF managers or domain managers in the in the past, and uh, plus the VIMs constitute, or uh, you know they kind of enable the orchestration of your network services and the management of your network services. Uh, key elements, uh, like I mentioned, uh, you know uh, um, virtual applications, uh, network network functions, and uh, uh, the VIM NFVI. 
Um, uh, one thing, like, you know, we started the Cloud Manager solution two and a half, three years ago. Yeah, about um, three years. Um, and at the time, there was no this division of, you know, managers versus orchestrators. But clearly, um, you know, the, every VNF, I mean, we see in the telco space, uh, have, their own, uh, have their own domain managers, and uh, it's inevitable that there would be something called a VNF manager that would be doing that in the virtualization as well. Uh, however, in the absence of such a thing, um, we did come up with the concept of a generic VNFM you know, uh, as part of our architecture and the, and the planning. We'll talk a little bit about that again. Um, what's beyond virtualization? So yes, I I think you know if you look at the picture in the middle, um, these are these are you know most familiar uh, network functions, uh, virtual IMS, uh, uh, EPC, uh, CDN. Uh, if you just take them as applications and you want to deploy them on the virtual infrastructure, uh, absolutely, I think OpenStack has evolved quite a bit. Um, uh, some of the other vendors are also coming up with virtualization solutions, but I think you know the, the closest is definitely the OpenStack, and the you know there's there's a lot of support from, especially from the telco uh, industry, um, to take that as more of like a de facto um, VIM and NFVI. So we, we are glad to see that. And uh, if it is just about virtualization, I think you know we we do have a lot of tools in the OpenStack, you know. Uh, ecosystem and a uh, little bit above that, I mean, you know, Heat was introduced to orchestrate and you know uh, deploy resources. Um, you know, there were IT tools like you know Puppet, etc. They were doing great job at uh, you know with the with the uh, deployment. Uh, but the story doesn't just stop at virtualization. It's the whole life cycle management of your network services and uh, you know your network functions. Um, what do we need to do um, when you are in that? Um, you know, when, when your role uh, is to manage and orchestrate. Here is here are the few things that we we saw or you know as the challenges that we need to um, face or solve uh, when we go to uh, when we have to support the orchestration and management of uh, network functions. Um, uh, you have to be able to customize and extend. Um, this is both your interfaces and your functionality. Uh, you have to provide secure and open access. Um, it has to be operationally ready, so FCAP support, you know, service assurance. Operations integration. You have your you know existing systems, uh, legacy or you know even you know advanced systems that. Um, uh, uh, a lot of, you know, I, I think it, this is the biggest challenge in the, especially in the telco industry, where, um, you know, operations is uh, always something that people try to solve at the end, but it is like the most important thing when you are trying to actually launch a service or a launch um, a, a function. So, and then uh, physical infrastructure connectivity. Uh, this is not going away in the next year, two years, three years, right? You all know that. You know, it's a nice dream to have everything virtualized, but that's that's not the case. I know for a long time we will still have to support the physical network and infrastructure connectivity from your virtualized uh, world. Okay, uh, let's dig a little deep into the. So, what is needed? Um, like I mentioned open and secure APIs in various layers. You know, you saw the Mono framework. There is like OSS, BSS systems talking to the, um, the orchestrator, and then an orchestrator then communicating with the, with the domain managers or VNF managers. And then there is interfaces to the VIMs to, for resource management and uh, um, to collect the information. So all these uh, interfaces are supported by the uh, APIs and you need to have open and secure APIs. Adaptation and extension framework. Um, so th 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 that's the biggest challenge. And, and, uh, VNF is not a VNF. A network service is not, not every service is same or not every function is same. So um, if you, um, it, even for a specific, you know, let's take the case of an EPC. Um, you, you try to build as a, as a vendor. You try to build with your own 
EPC solution in your company in mind, and then you know when you are just uh, playing a role of an orchestrator, you go and try to integrate these things. Um, you will find surprise, surprise, it's not exactly what you thought it is. I mean, people follow standards to some extent, but then there is always extensions and adaptation required in every layer that we are talking about here. And uh, uh, the biggest challenge, like I mentioned, you know, when it comes to the operations, performance, and fault management, um, and uh, virtual and physical network connectivity. I think there has been a tremendous amount of work that has been done in the past, uh, you know, year, two years. Um, whether it is, you know, SDN controllers by various vendors, and even the standards uh, have been evolving. And there are still a lot of challenges. I think uh, we. Uh, they, uh, we attended some talks, and you know, uh, some of very good points were brought up. Hopefully, the the community and also the you know the standards bodies will address these things. Um, but uh, that is still like you know uh, a reality that you need to have uh, connectivity. Okay. Okay, uh, I'll just go one by one and uh, um, talk about what we mean by the open APIs. Um, uh, kind of clubbed in the v the VNF catalog in there. Um, so the definitions could be by uh, the standards such as like you know open virtualization format, uh, Tusca, and um, and also the Heat uh, templates are getting a lot of popularity these days. So uh, you need to have you know these uh, um, uh, you know standards-based uh, catalogs in your in your system. Um, OSS, BSS, and uh, not born uh, systems. So um, I think most popular ones HTTP REST uh, or you know SOAP-based APIs. Again, not every uh, operators. Um, OSS BSS system is same, so you need to have again some some level of openness there, and of course security as well. Third-party VNF managers. Um, so again, you know, um, I think uh, we all know that you know some of you are from the you know vendor um, companies, uh, just like Ericsson, uh, whether it's you know Juniper, Brocade, um, you. You have certain view of you know um, domain managers in mind when you're you know building your uh, orchestration solutions. But again, uh, when you try to integrate with uh, other vendor you know solutions, and you will have to because um, that's what is going on, right? I mean, if if you're from uh, any of the tier one operators, you know this very well that. Uh, you're not getting all the VNFs and uh, services from the same vendor as you're getting the systems integration work or orchestration, right? So there need to be a lot of openness in the APIs there. Element management, uh, EMS systems, same story there. Um, uh, Vim APIs. I think uh, uh, OpenStack has done a very good job uh, with respect to the core, like you know, uh, storage, uh, compute, networking, networking is still evolving. I think uh, there's there's a lot of talks about what is needed from the telco perspective, um, uh, but there are um, the only concern in the API layer would be uh, some of the operation side of things, like how 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 we can gather information about the faults in the system or performance of the system. Etc. That I think still needs to be, you know, um, evolved. Yeah, and and resource uh, information is still something that is uh, lacking there. Right. And uh, last but not the least, the network infra infrastructure itself, like you know, talking to Neutron or Open Daylight, or um, etc. Okay. That's the API part. And. Next is the adaptation framework. What you mean by that? If you see those, like you know, uh, yellow uh, rectangles there, um, so the APIs are there, but then uh, it provides you some sort of like a structure or interface. But then functionality-wise, the, the behaviors are different again. So in each each part here, like you know, um, the orchestration framework itself, you have to enable or you have to provide the trigger points or plug points so that 
every uh, you know a new solution can introduce custom logic into into your flows. Okay. Um, and the second one is extremely important: interface adaptation for network connectivity. You know, such as SDN controllers, uh, physical network elements, network management systems. So. Uh, not everything is so pressed HTTP, right? So we are talking about you know a lot of systems uh, talking uh, netcon, CLI. Uh, you need to SSH into the systems to do the co configuration. You know post instantiation of these virtual resources so that they can be there can be connectivity established between the your you know VMs and the and the physical elements. Um, VNF manager interface adaptation. Uh, I again, you know, we from our own experience, we had to introduce. Um, we went with certain assumption, but when, but when we get to an actual solution for a particular operator, we had to go and introduce some trigger points where there would be some custom logic invoked, uh, even in that area, and adaptation of uh, various uh, EMS uh, element management systems. Okay. And uh, I'll uh, let Hashad take over and talk about the next two challenges. Yeah, so uh, th thank you, Sudhir. So like Sudhir said, uh, there are standards uh, that are being defined, but they are still not standards. Um, I think more or less all the vendors and telco providers are in uh, together in this journey that we want to have standards at the CPL layers, but in the absence of actual standards, this inter the adaptations on some of those API layers that we talked about is very, very critical. And that's, uh, I think, for, that is going to be the situation for quite some time. Um, uh, and there are adaptations that, that, that will have to uh, adjust to that. Okay, so the, the next topic uh, uh, that we are talk, going to talk about is operational readiness, or as Sudhir said, service assurance, fault and performance management. Uh, now, talking about the virtualization is one part, but when we are talking about the virtual network functions and network services, it involves a whole lot of infrastructure that is still not virtualized. And you also have elements that are uh, new elements compared to what you had in the earlier physical network function uh, uh, implementation. You have the whole Vim layer, you have the NFVI layer, and you have to be able to take uh, the fault and performance uh, data from all these layers, correlate them, and provide a holistic view to your operations uh, team. Otherwise, system becomes very hard to use. Uh, and when you talk about, we are just starting, but when we are going into production and these things are supposed to scale and have the agility uh, uh, to sc scale up, scale down, and uh, uh, put together the VNFs and services in a very, very short time, if you don't have that end-to-end -end visibility into the operations uh, data, uh, it, it will be a real, uh, problem uh, to actually be accepted in the op telco operation environment itself. So that is uh, the, the key aspect. The other thing that you have to be able to do with uh, the NFVO uh, and the VNM managers is to provide highly available and disaster re re resilient uh, uh, platforms because most of these use cases now require that even though these are the management systems, they will be in some sort of a closed loop uh, uh, operations control. And having the downtime on these systems itself uh, is going to impact the services in some form. So that is another new aspect that you have to be uh, aware of. The other aspect of uh, the VNFs and uh, network services, like we talked about earlier, to begin with uh, in the first slide, that this is not virtual network functions are not sitting on, on a virtualization platform in isolation. These are not simple compute services that where you can deploy 
let's say 50 VMs, they do compute job, pro produce the result, produce the data, and they quit. It's nothing like that. These are the, uh, the virtual machines that are getting connected, providing the data services uh, 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 in various forms, voice, video, and what, what not, uh, to users who are connected in some physical form uh, over the wide area network. So after creating the virtual network functions, stitching them together into the uh, physical and uh, networking infrastructure is absolutely critical. And the only, if you don't do that end-to-end -end, uh, orchestration, you are talking about multiple systems now that, that have to work by, by, and users have to go from console to console. Uh, and again, it is another operational nightmare uh, if you do that. So having the adaptability to connect to a wide variety of physical and uh, network infrastructure that is already there and that will be there for quite some time to come is a, a key requirement. Uh, and so are we, are we just talking about some theory here or uh, so far we, we have been talking at a very, very high level, what are the requirements? Uh, and this is based on our uh, experience, like Sudhir said, uh, in number of tier one um, uh, operator uh, proof of concepts for this uh, uh, whole uh, infrastructure, uh, as well as some uh, real life integration with other vendors and systems uh, in this environment. And we started the, the journey about three years back. Uh, the result is that uh, the NFVO and VNF manager, generic VNF manager was built as a, a cloud manager product in East, uh, Ericsson. It basically uh, covers the aspects that we talked about. Uh, we have uh, orchestration platform that is capable of uh, orchestrating the VNFs and uh, virtualized services uh, in a geographically distributed uh, infrastructure and also stitch together uh, the whole end-to-end -end flows and provide the operational uh, capability using the FCAPS uh, data that, it, that is being captured from all this uh, wide area, wide variety of platforms. So that is a little bit about the, the product that we are talking about. These are some of the uh, screenshots from uh, the proof of concepts, et cetera, that we have done, showing you some what the services look like, and you have some configuration management and some uh, physical network function connectivity that, that was shown there, I think. Uh, one of the, yeah, one of the slide had that, I think. Yeah, you have DNS server and right, SDN data server, yeah. Controller integration. Yeah, and uh, going a step further, uh, uh, the, Cloud Manager product is just one part of the Ericsson's portfolio. Uh, Ericsson's por portfolio covers the entire uh, ecosystem of uh, network function virtualization. Uh, and uh, it consists of basically the Ericsson execution environment, which is based on uh, OpenStack, uh, providing the VM and NFVI layer. We have uh, a brand new uh, hardware platform, HDS 8000, which is a hyperscale, uh, 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 scale architecture, right? Uh, yes, it's a disaggregated uh, yeah. data center. If you are interested in it, you know, Ericsson Booth has a prototype as well. Yeah. And it's pretty cool, so. And uh, uh, we have Ericsson Cloud Manager as a NFVO, and we have VNF Manager, and uh, Network manager, Ericsson Network Manager is a specific VNF manager for some of our virtual network functions in the environment. So that is the overall portfolio we have. In summary, we talked about four things. We talked about the need to cover virtual as well as physical network connectivity, fault and performance management, redundancy and disaster recovery. Uh, adaptability is paramount and uh, standard based APIs is what, what we need from such a platform. 
So I think with that, uh, we are ready to take any questions you, you, you have. Uh, yes. Can you come to the mic, please? Oh, it's a challenge. So, um, so I from China Mobile, and I do have a question. I see the slides in the, in the middle. So your orchestrator can manage both networking and, uh, I mean, manner part, right? But in the latest slide, I mean, the previous slide, you showed the network orchestrator, I mean, and, and also the separate cloud manager. So are you talking about the network orchestrator and uh, uh, WIM orchestrator, manner orchestrator is separated? Or what do you mean here? Can we both you want to address that? No, they are not separated. It is. Uh, Can I go slide by? Yes, yes this sure. Uh, next one. Next one. I mean, this one is integrated, but right. I mean, the, 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 the second last slide, I think. The cloud, this one? No, this one is integrated. I understand. Oh, you're talking uh, about the next one. The portfolio. portfolio. The portfolio. Okay. Uh, so one. the network manager is, oh, the name is a little confusing. It's actually, uh, it's a VNF manager for uh, the Ericsson network uh, functions. And it's a, it's a pro portfolio product. It's an existing product that already does oh, the, the, legacy, the, right. the, 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 already does the network function management for yeah. the physical functions. So right. you see that traditional native deployments. Then, then you have separated the VNF manager. Is that the right. So yeah. for Ericsson VNFs, we do have a domain manager. We, call, we can call it a specific VNF manager, but it does address the needs of various network functions in Ericsson. In absence of that, when, when a cloud manager is integrating, in absence of Ericsson network functions, then we do act as a generic VNF manager. That means absence. If not absence, so who is going to make decision? So that then the interface would be the NFV or, or, or VNFM. VNFM interface. It will there is a or VNFM interface between network manager and e cloud manager. That's this interface. Okay. This would be the ENM Ericsson network manager. This would be the Ericsson cloud manager in that. Okay. Context. So still this one is top. Right. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay, sure. Okay. So uh, let me play devil's advocate. Uh, in a sense, integration of new technology, especially automation, with existing in, uh, infrastructure has always been a challenge in any IT operators. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is the most peculiar thing in telco operators which makes NFV very difficult to adopt? So let me repeat the question and tell me if I got it right or not. So the question is, this kind of integration of new technologies in any environment has its challenges. Yes. But why is even more of a challenge in telco environment? Is that the question? Yes. Okay. So again, my view, uh, I would say the amount of uh, infrastructure that exists in mm -hmm. telco is tremendous. It is. The, the infrastructure that you see today has been built up for past 40, 50 years, uh, and that infrastructure is not going away anywhere. Telco has very strict methods and operations that, that are required to provide the reliability. And some of this is, in many uh, domains of the world, it is mandated that they have to provide that kind of reliability. So integration of new technologies in that kind of operational environment is even more challenging because nobody is going to take any chance by just introducing a whole new technology uh, without going through a lot of testing, a lot of uh, verification. And that's the, that's the main challenge. Did I answer? Yes, makes sense to me. So, in a short words, uh, conservativeness of telco operators. I'm sorry. 
they are conservative. You can say it that way, but uh -huh. it's a, a conservative for a reason. It's not right. just because yeah. they don't okay. want makes to change. Sense. Sense. It's, it's, you see a lot of telco operators here, and yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, I mean uh, they have a very good reason why they they are conservative about it, right? And yeah. we all know that. Uh -huh. um, you know, just the sheer and size of the system. And you will see same thing in utility. If you want to go to utility industry, if you introduce new technology, these are the industries that are providing infrastructure. You can't just throw new things in there. Yeah, I know. In that sense, every industry has its own difficulty and conservativeness. Yes, yeah, so yeah. I don't. Uh, I, I won't understand what particular Intel operators. Uh, yes, it's the scale. You can mm -hmm. say scale, scale and the the re the requirement for uh, reliability that they they desire. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. One, one question. With, with Tucker and Heat coming, do you believe vendors should continue to spend money in orchestration functions like that, or do you believe it's going to take oh. over anyway? I expected this question. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and, and uh, you can also <laughs> say Tucker, but here's the thing, right? When we started this journey, none of these guys existed, right? So, but we are looking at you know, every one of them, and uh, and actually Ericsson Cloud Manager does support HOT as one of the formats that you can deploy the service. So, so we do support stack operations as well. But, you know, like, like I mentioned in the beginning, uh, it does solve, uh, he does solve the orchestration at that, you know, particular whim. And uh, yeah, there are some, some talks this time about like multi-site, et cetera. We will definitely look at that. Um, uh, these things keep uh, c coming up, but uh, the story, the whole story just does not stop at supporting orchestration and deployment and also supporting, you know, uh, multi-site. The reality is you, you will be in a multi-vendor situation, right? And uh, you will have to support customizable interfaces. How so, do it's you so it's a services opportunity rather than a product opportunity? A combination, because we are ahead of the game, if I may. So, but yeah, it is still uh, a services opportunity. Yeah, yes. uh, and uh, if, if, if I may add, uh, it's uh, virtualization uh, and its orchestration, it was going to happen. It was, it, it is a no-brainer. It's not telco requirement. Orchestration of this complex workloads is required everywhere. So it was going to happen. Multi-site is going to happen. It's and we don't want to say that, okay, we, we, we don't take advantage of that. Industry should take advantage of that and build on top of that. But some of these aspects that we are talking about, they, are, they have nothing to do with virtualization. And that's why the topic we chose, going beyond virtualization, what else do we need in the orchestration platforms? So that is why some of these aspects, FCAPs for, for the, the applications, the, you, you have to build that. The orchestration of physical network services, you have to build that, right? So it's, it's going to all co coexist. Nothing is going away, <laughs> you know? Hi, um, uh, can, can you open the slide? Uh, just you were, uh, we were seeing, uh, I think the previous, uh, uh, I think more. Uh, uh, yeah, that one. I see that the, the EMS, the VNFMS is connecting to the third party devices. Then I know that the, you guys are from the Ericsson, and you can connect to the Ericsson devices, but you don't know that how the other devices are, like the CLIs, like we can, I think you guys can see the manuals from the other like vendors' the devices. So how are you kind of developing the, the how do you say the connectors or adapters? They are not out of the box. That's why we talked about the adaptation, adaptation framework. framework. So your framework is not rigid and they're not fixed hard-coded APIs. You have to support some level of customization. So trigger points. If I do this, then you pro provide hooks into it so that the, you know some, someone can introduce custom logic into it or custom parameters into the flows. So that's that's where we were, we are open, like you know, providing like uh, a custom adaptation framework. So the, like the customers took, uh, upon the request, like, uh, what the customer wanna use, the some specific functions, then uh, the 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 part is developed. In, so the part cannot uh, kind of cover the everything. Out of the box, no. Out of the box. If anybody claims that <laughs> they can cover a, a, a everything, just run. <laughs> <laughs> Anderson, thank you. Thanks for the question. 
so just to extend on that a little bit, the the plug-in approach, which you know most vendors use, uh, has its challenges from uh, release management and you know future feature support. What are you guys doing to enable that to be a little bit smoother from a transition perspective? I think that is a very important point. Basically, you want to drive that plug-in uh, from with some loose coupling. It's you should not. If you say that you this is Java SDK, you, you are in that lockdown situation. Plugins have to be upgraded as soon as your framework changes are done. Uh, other, right. So keeping the loose coupling, and that's why I think Sudhir kept mentioning some of the triggers. The approaches we follow are like REST APIs, REST-based notifications, the callbacks, uh, et cetera. So or, me or message bus. Or message bus or things which, like that. Which so. decouples things completely so that, yeah. So I, ch I, I challenge vendors, and I'm being one of them, but um, is that going to make life easier, or is the complexity of having so many plugins for so many different devices, if I want to be in a multi-vendor environment, going to be actually be a supportable solution from a carrier's perspective? Um, the, and the, the last point I'd like to make is, though, is there's two, there's two kind of models. Yes, everybody can use a plugin, which gets to your common bus, basically, or the, any other vendor's common bus. The other model is to have a standard for what the interface is, not the actual protocol used to transfer messages, but what, a proto what an interface should look like and try to get vendors to standardize for their VNFs for that. Absolutely. Is that a model that you think is uh, Absolutely. viable? Absolutely. That's the direction that we are talking about. But is it going, is it going to happen in... One year, two years, three years? Yeah, it's learned by experience. It, I it's, think. It's, it's basically, uh, the idea is that you standardize on these interfaces. I think this is great that I, after all this 30, 40 years of learning on OSS, BSS systems and EMSs and all that, everybody has come together and said that let's define the interfaces between systems. Let's not just say that. Put everything and we'll keep putting plugins or putting things together on the message buses. So uh, I think your comment is very valid. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so maybe just a follow-on question there. Um, uh, let's see, I've been following some work in the IETF, and there they're defining these uh, Yang models, and mm -hmm. it allows you to talk to the device over NetConf, and it's kind of that, that standard type of interface. Exactly. Where you're not you're not standardizing an exact API. It's more of a, a model. The content you approach. pass is not standardized. The, 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 how you talk to the, the, those devices is standardized. And the, the models can be uh, fed into. So one of the things that we didn't talk about is the southbound adaptation that we are talking about is based on uh, such a device model. Yeah. That we have, we, have, we have built a platform that takes the device models and supports NetConf. But at the same time, it also supports CLI and whatever other things that you have because that's the physical reality. That's the reality, exactly. I mean, we actually are going yeah. through a real deployment case where we do support uh, NetConf and uh, CLI. So. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. that approach looks very promising it, it to me. I was just wondering, do you see any problems with that or is that, I mean, you agree that's kind no, of... No, we, we agree. As long as people don't go in 10 and different hopefully, directions, yeah. then hopefully I think... The, the yeah. whole industry merges in yeah. that direction. Yeah, exactly. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Awesome. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you all. Thank you.